and I uh, welcome back all of you into my channel so what are the big news today is that I have finally reached into another city which is Froome this is uh, already uh, maybe third or fourth or fifth city that I am uh, being inside while my trip in uh, United Kingdom considering on uh, which ones would I say to be uh, short visits or long visits and which places do I consider as visits as all depending on if I am there only for the time of uh, being out of the stat oil station or a gas station or during the time when I am uh, there for a longer time and uh, actually immersing myself inside the city so it all depends on this and that I have to admit I am feeling very very human I'm feeling incredibly human and I guess it is because I've been uh, mostly sleeping indoors for another week and um, what is the effect of it? is that uh, I'm just sort of feeling like uh, you know like society is sort of bringing me into itself again um, and it's funny it's so funny that it's uh, I'm trying to think if it's funny or not funny in a way it is uh, like uh, you know incredibly annoying but in a way it's so so comfortable so I feel like I'm really understanding you who are living in the society in a way that you actually feel that you belong there if you know what I mean um, so what is this thing that's been going on I can give so many names to it I can give literally thousand and billion trillion million names to it and I still cannot grasp it in a way that my body feels accepting and my spirit feels alive and I feel like this is really really important whatever you're doing your spirit has to feel alive it has to feel that it's uh, doing the right thing and uh, when your spirit is feeling it's doing the right thing then your body is really really functioning in a right way in a way that you are not having a lot of regrets and in a way that your body is constantly in tune with it or at least being guided by the spirit um, or if not guided by the spirit then the spirit can you know jump in and tell the body that you know this is what's going on and this is the way you have to follow right now so when we take the three, the mind, the body and the spirit, these three are very, very important things. This is what you consist of. The mind is where your mental power is, where you can focus, where you can make your decisions and your intentions and everything at all. Your body is the physical thing that follows the mind and in actuality works together with the mind if everything is good and the spirit is the thing that gives it the life that gives it the life energy and force which is really really important so basically if your mind and body are down then all you have left is only your spirit and your spirit can uh, you know be in a place of actually being in charge of what it is that you need to be doing and what it is that uh, your spirit is guiding you towards with the union of the Holy Spirit of the everythingness of the cosmic consciousness and of the other people's spirits for example when you are really in times of trouble then your own spirit can go and seek for help and guidance and it usually you know guides you like through another human being through another human being who can be anybody on the street who can be literally anybody and you really have to be aware that you know in that 
place you're not giving a single judgment about the person who is approaching you and telling you something you know or asking you if you're all right i mean i've been asked thousands of times of times if i am all right and i really you know got to answer not like oh yeah i'm okay i really got to stop there i really got to stay with the human who's talking to me who is sharing their concern about me and i really got to stop there and i got to immediately take the spirit in and allow it to express to the human being what i'm going through and that's genuine conversation it's like you know you can let your spirit totally out whatever it's saying or doing i've been also seeing it many many times in the streets sometimes people are just you know saying total random things but if you li- like listen to it through your spirit then it makes so much sense you can interact with them and you can also offer your own you know guidance and sharings what this person particularly needs on the level of only spirituality without the single obtrusion of the mind or of the way the person is looking like or behaving because this is the place where there is spiritual healing happening and it can only happen when you allow it to happen completely freely without a single pressure so i feel like this is really really important to put out there um especially now that they understand what are you know the common problems of society after being very much out of it just sleeping in the bushes and god knows where doing god knows what so i'm kind of uh, understanding that human beings can go into craziness and craziness of mind even craziness of heart very easily very very easily and how to jump out of it without spending like hours and hours in meditation or prayer can be tough can be tough but it's actually doable when you are actually in a very bad state if you yeah i feel like i just want to you know help you while i'm helping myself which is another feeling that humans can so easily have so this is something that i really wanted to put out there because i feel to be important i feel to be god damn very very important um so right now what i'm feeling is my body is not very well because i haven't been stretching for a while i haven't been really running or doing yoga for a while and it's really really simple to see it now that i'm actually in tune with the spirit which just you know loves to talk and not to judge its own beingness which i find very very important highly important just want to tone it again and again and again feel like my own body is also talking to me and uh, saying that uh, you know this uh, is the way it is whatever it is it's all the way it is and if you continue i will get better because i get to let my voice out which is pretty important so just to talk from like more of like personal level i have lost my uh, stick my stuff which i was dancing with i had it for about a month and i just left it somewhere i don't know where somewhere where i was sitting unfortunately i left it there and it's pretty sad i l- went to look for it the other day and i didn't find it i mean i really love this stick and i've been trying to find a new stick today in the bath sorry it's not from where i'm at i'm in bath i'm very very sorry i just made a mistake i'm going towards from and uh, i had a pretty sleepless night because i had to be in the bus station for 5 or 6 hours and uh, i got to sleep a little bit in a bus but the bus station was hectic place it was uh, one of those london bus stations it was a victoria bus station so if you know anything about it you know that there's crazy stuff there were all sorts of madmen there and i was sitting with one you know who said he just did like some drugs or something and uh, we were just sitting he was one of the more normal ones sir i mean i met a lot of guys sir and uh, he was one of the better ones so we're sitting together you know it's nice to spend time with somebody not to sit alone for too long um and he was really peaceful he had done something really peaceful 
So we were sitting there. He was also an artist. He showed his art to me. And uh, while I, we were sitting together, he had like a big, uh, big, uh, you know, this thing, can. Uh, not a can, but you know, the boiling thing, kettle basically. Like a big uh, kettle of uh, coffee. So we were drink drinking coffee. It was with lemon and some other stuff inside. Very, very nice stuff. Very peaceful. He was able to sell a few paintings while I was there. And uh, I was just, you know, reading Bhagavad Gita. There was just Ganesha's birthday while I was also in Brighton. And there was a big celebration. A lot of Krishna monks were there. And uh, while we were walking with my friend Luke, then uh, one of the Hindu monks uh, started to talk to us. And he also gifted me a Bhagavad Gita, which is the Hindu uh, holy book which is a book which I started to read one time when I was in airport and uh, again I was spending there like a long long time so I went into the prayer room to get some peace and do some prayers and uh, meditation and uh, I started to read Bhagavad Gita I found it there on the shelf and this is what I really got into it but unfortunately from the prayer room I mean you're not gonna take anything out of there because you want people to actually have a good experience to read the uh, holy books and to pray and to meditate and do the chanting that they need to do and so on. So I was actually really, really grateful that I was gifted this book a few days ago or a week ago from a Hindu monk. Very, very nice. I mean, I'm strongly with the belief that the spirituality has to be completely and totally and free. I mean, it can be on donation basis. But I am, I mean, me myself, I'm basically refusing to pay anything for spirituality unless it is very, very important for me. For example, like a few of the dances of universal peace um, payments and things that I have to do in order to get uh, like uh, the knowledge and the stuff that I really need to, which is, you know, also a place where people have put a lot of effort inside. But this is another topic, this is just, you know, my own little decision that I have made and which I am very, very grateful for. But this is just a small thing. Um, other than that, if there's like big uh, spiritualities, you know, like uh, Jesus Christ, Christianity, Hinduism, like Buddhist books and stuff, I feel like this stuff you need to be like really, really free. As well as the stuff that I am sharing and doing, I do this completely free out of my own uh, time, uh, my own pocket and my own neediness and a sense of duty which makes me feel, which makes me share my knowledge, my life and my information, my experiences, my way of uh, beingness, my way of life, my way of anything and everything. Um, I should probably talk a little bit slower. I'm just you know, feeling like once I start to talk, I've got so many things to say. And when I calm down, then it gets slower, and I really get into some sort of, uh, some sort of, uh, um, like actual topic which I wanna talk about, like more in depth. Um, so I feel like I really wanna sit down, actually, just you know, here next to the bridge, and just like you know, pretty beautiful bridge there, but it's a little bit uh, dark right now for it to be seen well. So I'm just gonna take my bags off. I was wearing bags as well. And uh, just gonna squat down here. I feel like squatting, you know, when you have like your heels down on the ground level. It's really, really good. It's like the best position for your body. I think this is also one of the Hindu beliefs. And there's a little bit of a funny smell somewhere in the corner. I feel like somebody has just left their, you know, internal liquids behind here. But since it's like a place of, um, with the light, I'm still going to be here. And just, you know, apologies to my nose later that it has to go through this funny, funny, funny smells. Like a cat pee, basically. Um, it doesn't really smell like human pee, but, you know whoever knows who made this uh, funny smell here just probably knows it pretty well who they were. Um, 
and I'm just saying it wasn't me <laughs> it wasn't me um, <laughs> um, so um, yeah Phew. I feel like really unwinding unwinding and um, taking things easy taking things very very easy while still making uh, another episode another episode so I guess what you have noticed is probably that at first my introductions are like real fast and strange I mean maybe not I don't really know because I rarely listen to my own talks sometimes I do and it's pretty funny really interesting to hear yourself talking and but it also increases confidence that whenever I feel like you know I'm really with the hang of it of the topic that I'm doing then actually I just let it flow the way it's supposed to be going and very often I have to follow my mouth just trust my mouth that it's making sense of the topic what it's talking about and I feel like when it's interesting for me to discuss something it's probably interesting also to listen to it so at least that's also my experience when people are trying too hard to create topics here and there about whatever it is that they're making them then I feel like it's you know I just don't want to hear it I don't want to listen to it um, so yeah when I think of like self-acceptance then I feel like past few days I've been very much feeling like medicine like medicine like in a genuine sense and uh, this medicine is strange it's like um, it's like I'm trying to allow myself to fly freely in whatever way that I like it and I feel like I'm still having these lineages that are holding me in a prison and I've made this figure of speech a lot of times before I have said that human mind can take us into prison into our own created prison which we think we have to create for ourselves and then it's like imaginary prison where we are inside and um, I feel like uh, you know it's very very common tendency that we can do like be in this imaginary prison and when we are in this imaginary prison it is highly easy for us to start and create this into as if it's real I mean just another day I was talking about how to bring your imagination and your ideas into reality and this is also part of what is manifestation but what I'm talking about right now is that when we are you know in our imagination when we are being a little bit of like limiting and when we are then trying to you know als almost like believe into our imagination and that is real thing then this is a little bit uh, can be a little bit tough because how do you run away or out of something that is holding you there inside but that is and that seems so so real and like almost like a jail and how to make your mind believe that it is not real that it is just something that you have made up and that you don't have to you know buy yourself into it so to say like buy yourself into it you know like create the conditioning around the theme or topic that it is actually real and the more you create your own conditioning the more you are seeing that you are doing a lot of harm to yourself if you make your life conditioned for example what is a heavy form of condition that usually people take as a normal thing is the thing called plans like plans ideas and creations 
this is actually heavily conditioned when we make a plan about this and that and uh, all of these things this is a heavy heavy form of conditioning and it's very very tough when we make a plan and we really want to make it happen as simple as like a bus ticket or like a little travel from one place to another one thing is when you have intention and intention usually is something um, like creative in a good sense that you really intend something good for the world for some meta concept that you think of or you know some human for yourself when you have like just a pure intention and you don't give it a lot of conditioning but you go with the intention and you allow it to happen but another way is when you are having a plan and you are really precise with it and you're like condition, 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 condition and then you accept that uh, expect that all of these conditions will happen and will go the way that you want them to go and even if they will then the mind around it can be like really really hectic because at the time when you're making the plans if you you know spend a lot of time making them then during every thought motion that you have during these times this is also going to be manifested in your plans and in that case the intention of your plan first was smooth but then you see that it's actually like this and then you are like uh, do you want it to be like this or would you like it to be nice and smooth and uh, I feel like tell we are in these conditions, you know. I mean, the time when we're trying to make the plan actually happen. Because the manifestation of the goodness of the plan and our ideas, we have already let into air. But we want it to happen later. But actually what happens is it happens immediately. The karma that it is carrying, the energy that it is carrying, this happens immediately. And then later the plan is not so high, it's lower. And then you start to see that, oh, it's not like this at all. It's totally different. And I wanted it to be like totally, you know, I really wanted it to be this way and that way. And, and you know, these conditions that you have created have made you yourself, you know, want to change. And, and then you have to like actually be in a very good meditation to realize that these conditions are changing anyway because the higher energy already went into air and now you have the lower one and with the lower one you have to see that there is change there is change inside it and it can be difficult to accept it I mean when we are not used to it when our life is depending on some things that we don't want it to depend on or that we have created because we don't know any better and we have plans and stuff then we realize that these plans we have to turn them upside down we have to take the plans and put them into quantum universe and allow them to be molded and bolded and you know created into all sorts of other things in order for them to be something totally different something basically unconditioned something that we are not making into like something definite something definite would be something like you know this is like a food or that you know this is a mala or that there is like a breach there that's definite but even if we want to go over the bridge with our hood and the mala then these are like three things that we have there which are definite and then we create the motion so it's like three certainties and emotion around it which is uncertain 
so we can take it in this way for example but we can also see that we just you know want to love each other and in this way we don't have to make a lot of plans but we can allow things to go as they want to go and this is the thing that very many times nature is pointing us into right now I just was grabbing this little spider that was hanging from my hood and probably trying to tell me something and I just let it walk on my finger and feel the energy of the spider tune into these magical creatures bring luck to us and healing there's probably another one somewhere in my face wonderful very very wonderful where do they come from from the skies maybe well anyway loving spider magnificent how they live really i'm actually allowing the spider to be walking on top of my sweater because it's so small it's probably really afraid of me and uh, it's already went into like curly ball and now it's doing probably a little bit better yeah it started to walk again very very nice very very nice these little things that make us smile and bring us back into the present moment so i was just uh, before as i arrived in bus with the bus then i um went around sit down in the city saw a lady who was picking uh, chestnuts i also got a few chestnuts very nice chestnuts then i was talking to another homeless guy i love homeless people this one was a little bit of a uh, very very jolly guy very nice guy um he was just having somebody some nice people going into the shop buying food for him and then there was another guy going past also with food so he gave one of the food bags to me which had like uh, nice uh, chicken wings inside so we were just you know sitting together sharing chicken wings and uh, he was having like some chicken balls and uh, and uh, up tops of bitter uh, coke so very very nice I mean talking to homeless always makes me happy they're so happy and so free and when I am stressed out it frees me up usually I also like to be the one who's you know in the point of freedom and also sharing to other people that liberation is possible that it's possible to be free and to just be this is a lot of what I'm actually talking about through my messages, through my videos, through the things that I'm doing that it's possible to be free possible to be liberated and possible to live happily it's possible to be completely liberated from everything and anything that you have that you're carrying and just be simplicity be with simplicity tune into it so long that you whenever you're out of it your whole being your whole body your whole everythingness starts to yearn for it and uh, you really gotta go there sometimes it's really really painful so highly painful when your own soul is trying to escape your body because it wants to be free it wants to fly away it wants to go to the heavens go to the skies go to anywhere go to just it really want to be free and when your body is not allowing you to dance and sing and do all these things that your soul wants to do then it's really really painful it's so so painful and then you start to write poetry you know talking to your soul basically talking to the beingness of god itself just inviting it to come back and to hope that it will come back to you and uh, you know yearn for it and sometimes it goes even further because it finds it so so beautiful this beautiful pain and like this thing like this bitter sweet this the it's the melody of this way of being and just goes even further and further and further and it's even more painful and then you are writing poetry you are doing all sorts of things for it to come back and this is where you find the godliness where you find what it's about what the world is about what the universe is about this is where you start singing you start to be happy you start dancing in the streets 
start to talk to people you didn't ta- think you know that you would talk to you start to do all of the things that you thought are impossible for you but possible for everybody else every other single being that can do them but not you no because your soul is you know so so away but what you start to do is you start to yearn for your soul for your being as being away there and this is how you establish a connection with it how you establish a connection in a way that is in a form of like devotion a form of like chanting and singing and and releasing yourself your body out without a single way of holding it back this is also what i'm sometimes talking about and sometimes i'm i mean this is the thing that makes us communicate at all it's the language of the birds it's the language of i mean if you're listening to bird song then the birds are always yearning for each other but they don't know it they're just making the sound because it's so natural this beautiful bird song and this is what humans are also doing and sometimes when you see somebody in the streets alone and they are talking to themselves or as if talking to somebody some spirit is singing or expressing their beingness in strange ways you know just sitting in places and not doing really a thing or even you know feeding birds with bread this is also what i put into this category this is the same way same place where a human being really is yearning is like totally yearning and it's so big part of existence and so so important because it's how our soul is expressing devotion our body is expressing devotion and our selves as you know human beings in our natural form we also have instincts and stuff we are expressing it and when we are expressing it then it is just you know it goes through us in a different level in a different way and it's highly devotional it's highly important for human beings to do this it's very 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 important just incredibly important for our evolution for our evolution as human beings human species and to be in contact with everything what there is and especially to try and grasp our true nature and then just to see that our true nature does not really exist at all where do you find it if you are in complete connection with the divine and you are there like so fully that you are almost like lost in the soup of it like for example imagine a pot of soup which has carrots potatoes radishes and onions and uh, garlic and uh, pulleyongs inside and it's got all of it inside and you are lost inside it one moment you are a piece of water another moment you start to form then there's all of these things you know it's whirling and burling and then all of a sudden you feel like if you are totally lost i mean your mind can also get a little bit lost but if you keep track on it you can also you know track it when you are like doing some heavy meditation or stuff and then all of a sudden you are you know understanding that wow now you are like your consciousness is like for example in like birds digestion system or like you know at the bottom of the sea or just with the sun and with some new tree you know somewhere it's like the whole consciousness of it and you can be anywhere if you let go of your beingness you are anywhere you can just get you know your realization again and again and again of where you are you can be like in some you know timeless place in some basically ageless place you can be in contact with anything for example when i was just before talking to the spider just connecting with it it completely changed my way of being it completely 
put me into a lot of, you know, a lot humbler place of beingness. And it changed my topic, the way I was acting and behaving and talking. You can be in anywhere, you can be like on top of a leaf, you can be just on top of a house, on a rooftop, you can be inside a tree, you can be inside an apple or in somebody's tone, just like a little piece of a tone of somebody. And if you let your soul run freely, it will really go anywhere and it will understand that soul is nothing else than just the knowledge and the experience of what it is going through. That's all that there is, the knowledge and the experience. There is the experience and the knowledge. And this is the thing that is going on. Sometimes I hear a little bit lost and then we're found again. But we wouldn't have the pleasant feeling of finding if we weren't ever lost. And if you're really mindful, we are never lost. If you really take care of our mind and our body and our way of being. But then again, maybe we want to travel because when we're sitting, I mean, on the other end, when we are sitting in meditation for a long, long time, then we can have total clarity around where we are but we can still be in these amazing places, like, you know, inside somebody's cell or molecule. And we can see that it's all transitory. It all turns into consciousness and it all turns into nothingness. And uh, I wouldn't like to put all sorts of names to it. I really wouldn't like to do it, because I feel like it can, you know, influence the way that we are churning on the planet and around the planet and you know our life journey basically and I don't want to make it too difficult or too tough to understand I actually want to or would like to keep it you know magical and um, clear as well as you know at the back of my body I feel like like a bowl of uh, bowl of little little something, little n- unnameable thing, just transitory, just abstract, abstract and nice. So what I was doing before, I was sitting and uh, I actually realized that, um, I mean, I'm talking a lot from the spirit right now and not from the mind and you probably realize and see that it's very different from the way when I'm talking from the mind. Um, But I'm kind of, you know, not putting myself through a hard time. Um, So, as I was talking in my last video was that I was doing Omane Pema Fum with my mala but actually this mall had 99 beads, which is um, Islamic mall with the God, God's n- names of Allah. And I actually had two malas, but I feel like I really like Omari Pemehum. And I mean, I gave it a thought. I really did also the Allah names I- with the mala, but I felt like Omari Bemahum was so much more communicating with me. So that I uh, changed, took the two malas which I had, the 99 bead malas, and I made them all into 108 bead malas with uh, 10 beads I- on top of it. Um, you know, the Buddhist path of like the 10 perfections, which is pretty symbolic and nicely simple. So what I have now is the same mala with uh, 108 beads. Just a little bit of a change. So I did this on Mani Bemba home with it 
and um, just sort of felt like it's you know proper to do the right mantra with the right mala. Um, 